Victor and this week I'm going to explain how I paint these bases that was not explained in the um, Liberator tutorial and yeah I will explain this because I was asked what um, to explain what are the colors I'm using and I thought maybe it's better if I explain the whole process and how I'm doing these bases so so far what I did here is we have sand at the bottom we have these pieces of bark here okay and I prime everything on white, so the, the miniature is uh, uh, glued to the base and then I put everything on top. Uh, this is one of the simple ones and I will focus on this one. And yeah, these are more complex and so you can add more items here. But I will focus on the very simple one to explain how I do this, the, the sun and how I do the rocks. Uh, the color I use here as a base color, so I prime everything on white with the spray. And you can see that it's not. I don't prime very heavily. I leave even I do. I use white. I leave a greenish color. I don't like to cover a lot the miniatures. Yet. I just want to make a very thin prime. And you see here on the on the piece of bark that you still see the brown from the bottom. This is one thing I want to explain. And the color I use, the base color I use for this part, is the Reynolds height. So I just apply very watered down Reynolds height on this part here and I see that I, I left part there, it's not a problem. So the next step I will do, I will paint first the rocks. The, the idea here is normally the rocks are going to be dirt by the sand that is below, not the other way around. So you want, when I'm doing the dry brush on the sand, I will not care if I dirt a little bit the rocks. The other way around, yes I care because the sand will not be dirted by the rocks. So the first color I will start using is going to be um, a stone vermin fur. It's a dark greenish that has a brown tonality. Grays can be quite different one to each other. These are two dark grays. This is more reddish, this is more bluish. So, and here we have another one, even more blue. So, grays you have to be careful because you have different tonalities. In that case, I will use this one that is more on the brown red area. Uh, it can be warm and can be also cold and in that case I'm using more a warmer gray for this application. So I will use, we can use a big brush, in that case I'm using just a shade, a medium brush. Uh, I take a lot of water with my brush and I just apply a very watered down um, gray on that and we are going to cover completely the the bark as it's very watered down you see that the color is quite um, um, it's not very dark is this this is okay no problem so I'm going to do that on the rocks in case you want some darker color you always can do then a wash after that uh, we can do this uh, if you want uh, but here yeah I to be fair, I only almost follow more or less the same process, but I can change a little bit the colors that I'm using for painting the rocks. So this is the one I'm using now for the liberators. I start with this way. So here again, I apply thin layer. And as it's very watery down, I we will need to wait until this device before doing the next step. So just you see, this is not uh, very complicated, but as this is a very rough and absorbent material, normally the bark, I recommend you water down a lot the, the paint, and yeah, you can water even down with the dirt, with the dirt um, water. It's not a problem uh, because it's, you will not see this on, on that. So normally, yeah, it's quite there the way to do the bases for me. I it really. It's the opposite when I paint than when I paint the miniatures. You don't need that much precision at this stage. Even if I go a little bit on the sun, it's not a problem. Because the sun has not a uniform color neither. So just apply this. Be sure that you cover everything. And I was forgetting the rock that is here, that is from the miniature. I will also paint this following the same process. I do first the, the bases normally when I'm painting miniatures because yeah I, I, it's more is a 
plus that is more is more dirty than than painting the miniature. So I want to avoid to dirty the miniature once it's finished. So if I'm dirty now a little bit the miniature at the bottom is not a problem. But later on, yeah, I, I want to avoid this and I want to. This is a step that can be very imprecise. So you see here. This is how I'm going to paint the rocks. Sorry if I was out of the camera a little bit. But uh, I apply just a solid base of uh, stone bearing food and I will be back once this dries. So now that the base colors are completely dry, we are ready to start doing dry brush on that. I'm going to use uh, just dry, dry brush work on, the, on this to do the next layers. Uh, the next layer I will, the next um, color I will use is downstone from Citadel, and I will start by brushing on the rocks. So this one can be applied quite heavily because it's quite close to the previous color, and the most, the more clear we go, then the most light, most careful we have to be. But this one I will apply quite heavily on the rock. And you can see it's not making a lot of change there. We are going to jump to the next one, that is Administrator Gray. You can see I don't dry the brush too much. I leave a lot. I still leave a lot on, on the brush, and I start applying administrator gray on the rocks. Okay. can see still on camera this is how I start looking and after that I start do is using when I'm doing bases maybe it's the only occasion when I use dry paint in games workshop I will use long beer grey so remember the I will do summarize at the end of the training of, of this part. So I take this one, this is really thick. Try to remove it quite because it's very wide compared to the rocks. And then I will no, I'm not almost not applying any pressure on that. Just passing the brush, touching the rocks, and this is good enough. Sorry, I'm the miniature I will do this one here. I will. Sorry, sometimes the miniature is covering the, the, the work. So, here as you can see, I just apply very soft. And uh, this bar have a lot of texture. This is going to be good enough. Here is, is a personal taste how light or dark you want to go on that. But I think this is, this is good enough for this type of work, but we can do, we can change and I can use no terminator, um, terminator stone, it's more yellowish color or more like brownish color, um, color or like beige, I will apply also a little bit of that, and what I like to do is not apply to the, almost on the all spots, it's just to break the uniformity, so for example I can apply it here, I can apply it on the top here, okay. Then here on the on this part, I can apply this. Will give a little warmer look to the rocks, and I think it's working well. So this is a way to make some nice touches. You can even use sometimes this one, flight one flesh. Um, no, this is the H paint. Sorry, but this is a very similar one for this one. Eldar flesh. Okay, 
so this is also I take a little bit it's very warm color and you can use it for example I can use it on the opposite side a little bit here is to break the uniformity you don't want the rocks to be the same on, on all, all over the places the rocks are not of a uniform color you want to break this uniformity and this is a way to do it so this hole is looking like uh, use it as you want and now we can go to work on the basis so remember the rocks I, which just as a summary a base color stone bourbon fur first have like very soft you see the color is very soft it's very short it's very close down stone and mini straight on the way and then you use this at the level as you want terminate with a stone uh, elder flesh or long long beard way you can use them three use one uh, as you want this is a more our own personal taste I like to combine them three but you you can use only one of them I will recommend to use if you only use one I will recommend this one the terminator's stone and now I will clean my brush dry it well because I want it well I don't want water here I want to keep doing dry brushing and I will start working on the sun and to work on the sun I will start with a, a, a scrap brown so we take some here we have to dry it quite well because it's very contrasting to the base color and we want to uh, we are going to apply this on on this pass so just a little bit and if you dirt in a little bit the rocks don't worry dogs the rocks will be dirty by the sun so it's I don't see this as a problem as you can see I forgot to do this rock will I will do it later on just to focus on 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 this big rocks that I forgot the small one to be fair I will do very fast job on this rock will apply administrative gray and I don't I'm not very concerned if it's a little bit mixed with the brown This is a small rock. I will apply a little bit of terminator stone just to make it okay. You can see I even mix a little bit of of the brown there. It's okay. And next I will use a tau um, light ochre. You can use also a flesh stone to do this part. Reply. There are parts that are difficult to reach and maybe I will saturate some of the parts of the bases. If that happens, for example, if I'm saturating too much this part, I will do this. Here as an example, we'll do the middle here. Okay. 
think this is If you put too much, okay, imagine that you have the feeling that it's too light and you want something darker, you always can do at the end. Let me close these spots. The end, the final touch that you can do to make them and also will help on giving more volume or showing more the detail is take, take Aglax air shade. Okay, this is the touch that you can do at the end. You don't need precision to do that neither. This normally the basis is the as I said the word that you need less to be less precise. And just apply a little bit where you think that is too much. Or all over the base. So I can apply here for example, this will give okay, you see it's and here that I, I put too much, I apply just the wash and just you know the, you can see more the sun guys. The other thing you can do here that it looks like hiding part, you can apply this to make it look darker, the same on that side. Okay, and you can apply a little bit of part of the rock. Is completely valid use. Complete, for example, especially the bottom of the rocks. You can apply this a little bit. It's a very valid. Okay. You can apply even on top on some parts to make to break with the uniformity. For example, here. Okay, we're gonna do something like that. So just to break a little bit the uniformity, you can do this as well. Put here, you can do something like that. I sorry, if I can, you can see. I will. Okay, and this is good enough. So a very fast way to do the bases. Uh, in that case I only did one, but you can do this on batches and do all the bases at once and very fast and just finalize with the wash and now this miniature is ready to start the work on the rest of the miniature so I hope you find this interesting, it's how to do desert rocket bases uh, the only thing that you can do at the end once the miniature is completely painted is to add some dead lands or brown herbs to represent the, the dead vegetation but this is how a way to do um, a desert looking bases here we have another one this is the one I'm working with the with the dracot but you can see more or less same techniques you see I, I like to go a little bit on the rocks so yeah I hope you like it and you find this interesting and in case you want to see anything else please let me know and drop me a message and yeah I would like to take care of what you want to see so yeah thanks a lot for watching and see you again later bye